Introducing Sync Framework, a new set of tools for connected lenses that allow us to empower users to create shared social experiences, either remotely or co-located. It's a way to experience lenses with a whole new dimension of interactivity and depth, combining augmented reality and multiplayer together. To make it easier for developers to start building quickly, Lens Studio 4.28.1 and above introduced Sync Frameworks tools to handle some of the important work of connected lenses. Let's walk you through some of those features. Connected lenses contain an overall architecture to create networked interactions, either synchronous or asynchronous, so that sessions can be shared between connected users. It also allows sessions to persist so that users can enter and exit lenses. For example, to play a move of a game and then pass control off and wait until the next move happens. At the core of these capabilities is managing and maintaining entity synchronization, making sure that the reality of the shared data is properly coordinated between users. That's why Sync Framework is designed to make it easier to build connected lenses by providing components pre-assembled out of many of the features we'll need to get up and running. These include components for synchronizing entity transformations in materials, instantiating new networked scene objects and prefabs, session controllers, and other helper scripts. The Sync framework comes with many examples to help you learn the basics of connected lenses at your own pace, and also gives you some examples that you can build on, creating full featured lens experiences. In order to get familiar with what Sync framework does, let's dive into some examples now and learn more about it. Let's download the example projects for Sync Framework and open the Lens Studio project. Once that is loaded, we'll see a number of items populated in the Objects panel. Before we go too far, make sure that the preview mode is set to Interactive Preview and that we have Colorful Home set as the current background. Now, let's open the Scene Root object and underneath it enable the Shared Value Examples. To start trying out Sync Framework, you'll need to click Launch Sync Framework. Then you can use WASD to move around the scene. Once active, you'll see a computer screen with a plus and minus button. This will be our focal point. Pressing those buttons triggers the value on the screen to increment and decrement the number shown. It's a simple interaction, but a good entry point into learning about Sync Framework. To see what is happening under the hood, let's navigate to the controller object under Simple Shared Score. Attached to that is the Simple Score controller script, which contains references to the plus and minus button via properties in the inspector. Let's open up the script in the Script Editor panel to see how this is functioning. Starting on line 16, we describe a new sync entity and storage property for that sync entity. Sync entity is a core component of Sync Framework, which handles many different functions needed for a multiplayer system. In this case, we want to store a value and make that stored value accessible to multiple users of our lens over the network. Storage properties enable us to use and persist data for our sync entities. First, we create a sync entity to handle shared scores. We create an integer storage property, then add that to our sync entity to track that score. An add score function is created that updates the storage property. A few function callbacks are added to respond to user input and modify the score value. While this is a simple use case, it does showcase two of the main concepts in Sync Framework. Using Sync Entity as the starting point for shareable scene objects and using storage properties to define the data that you want to share. Now let's dive into a gameplay-based example. To get the air hockey table used in this example video, just download it from the link in this description or you can use the air hockey currently included with Sync Framework. With the air hockey scene loaded, let's disable the shared value scene and enable the air hockey scene. Reset the lens in the preview window so we can relaunch the project, which will automatically start up the networking for our connected lens. Once we launch, we can see that there are controls to allow users to join a game. We can also start a game without having to join. On either side of the AR table are paddles, which you can move, as well as scores represented on the table surface. There's also a puck, two paddles, and a scoring zone, which increments the score for either user when the ball hits them. Everything you need for a classic air hockey style game, now in a new AR context. This demo provides a lot of insight into how to build experiences with the capabilities and affordances of a shared AR space. Let's take a look inside some of the control logic to see how this functions in code. To keep things simple, let's just look at the air hockey paddle script. 
similar to our previous example, we see a similar pattern. We create a sync entity, a few helper properties so that we can easily store our changing data, which in this case is the position of the paddle. We store that on the sync entity by adding a float property called pause x. As users update their paddle, sync entity automatically updates the data in real time for each user. In the Air Hockey controller script, we can see how players are able to join the game and start playing. It also maintains the score state and ownership of the players. We hope this inspires you to dive into Sync Framework's example projects and try them out with other Snapchatters so you can get the full experience and begin to imagine your own. Sync Framework offers a set of powerful tools and components to build and test new ideas in an immersive and highly interactive way. We're looking forward to seeing how you use Lens Studio's features and your creativity to power the next generation of interactivity.